Alright, welcome to the weekly gaming quick save show recorded live at 3 p.m. Pacific time every Friday right here on twitch.tv slash Ben Reacts. That's right, I'm Ben, and I'm still going to react, fine brothers. I'm still going to do it. Can't stop me. On this week's show, going to review Rise of the Tomb Raider on PC and Firewatch, which is going to prove interesting. See where that goes. But first, let's take a look at some of the top stories of the week. Bottom of the I talked about this hacking group, CDM that uh, they couldn't couldn't hack Just Cause 3 to release it to pirates, our pirates. And now, with the Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, whatever, they're taking a year off to see what's going to happen. See if that affects game piracy, game sales, anything at all. Which, why this bothers me is that they make it sound like they're trying to do something altruistic. When in fact, they're not the Red Cross, they're Walter White. You're doing something illegal, so stop acting like there's some great grand service you're doing. Although, it will be interesting to see if it does change anything. I Probably not much. Someone's going to pick up the slack. I know you think you're the coolest and you're the best hacker, but... Life finds a way. I think that's what that movie was about. Other news, Ubisoft has officially confirmed... <clears throat> confirmed, they did something, they broke my brain, that there will be no new Assassin's Creed this year, which is the first year we've taken off since, I don't know, two? It's been a long-ass time, like 30, 40 games at this point. But that's good, and also, we're going to get to watch dogs, too, sometime within a year. And this is, you know, that's obviously a stark contrast to the 17 years we had to wait for the first one, but this might mean that Ubisoft is finally learning to just relax. And you don't need to see every single franchise of yours every year. You can kind of pace it out, make them grander, or whatever. This could be good. This could be a good sign for Ubisoft. We'll have to wait and see. Now, in a definite bad sign, after 13 years, game trailers is no more. And, I mean, 13 years, that's before YouTube. This is back when X-Play was the only other video game show, or video content, really. Um, and they paved the way for what's going on today with IGN and Kotaku and Polygon and blah, 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 GameSpot. And YouTube in the first place. So it's sad to see them go. But if you really look at it, and I was surprised to see them go, but if you look at their site, if it even is still up there, I have not looked, i uh, lazy. It hasn't really structurally been updated in like six years. It's dated when they were acquired by this company about a year ago. It laid off a bunch of people. This kind of seems to be <sighs> inevitable. I don't think they, the company that bought them really cared about them. And they didn't seem to be, this seemed to be something that they could salvage and they could make. And when you're told the day of that, oh yeah, the company is gone. That kind of rings foul there. I mean, it's the same way uh, Joystick was shut down. Just, now nah, we don't want this anymore, bye. That's kind of sucky. Kind of, just a little, just a little bit not nice. But the biggest, oh, by far the biggest, Quantum Break. Got some new details about how the show integrates. There's going to be, I think, four episodes, 22 minutes long. And based on their choices in the game, they can have little effects, larger effects in this show. That's very interesting. And I love what it's trying to do here. I'm not sure from a pacing standpoint how much I like it. I don't know if I want to be doing this cool shooting game and then I got to watch a show for 22 minutes. But at the same time, I did like Metal Gear Solid 4, so that has like seven movies in it. So who knows? It remains to be seen also how these choices are going to work and what the choices actually are. We'll see. The other news, the bigger news with Condor Break is it's coming to PC. It was rumored, now it's coming. And it came with these crazy system specs that they now have gone back and changed. But it originally said, hey, you're going to need a, the recommended specs for a 980 Ti, which is obnoxious. So they've, they've now come back and been like, hey, no, 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 that wasn't recommended. That's for Ultra. Okay, that's for Ultra. And then the recommended is a, is a 970. Still pretty crazy, still 
much more powerful than an Xbox One, which is pretty impressive because the game looks really good on Xbox One, and I'm wondering if there's going to be any funniness with that, of like, oh, we were kind of using the PC version hidden, ha 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 ha. Which brings to the actual, air quotes, biggest part of the Quantum Break news, the whining and complaining, screaming, screaming right there, about it coming to PC. People are, some people, are upset about this, and it comes back again to entitlement. And it's a weird, it's a weird issue because I understand you, you buy a console, you buy an Xbox One, you expect all these exclusives, but it's going to Windows 10. It's not going everywhere. And it's, this is obviously with these specs, that's a crazy spec. This isn't everyone. And there's people, I mean, there's people tweeting Phil Spencer, like, I canceled my pre-order. And he's replying back, he's like, why? Because someone on PC can play this game now? People are saying they're betrayed. It makes no sense at all. And it reminds me of the Rise of the Tomb Raider exclusivity, which people were upset about. Like, well, this is, this is a Sony game, I can't believe, you, can't believe they're doing this. I'm like, okay, these are companies, and obviously Microsoft paid them money, and Tomb Raider was on the Sega Saturn, and I'm pretty sure it was on the Xbox at one point as well. It doesn't even matter doesn't even matter. These are not your friends. These are corporations making money. Now back to Quantum Break. This just makes sense. This game, it's got some buzz, but it's not a, it's not a Gears of War. It's not a Halo. I think getting it on more platforms at launch is fine, and it's just going to get it into the hands of more people. And if you were truly a fan of Quantum Break, you would be excited by that. You would be pleased with that. That's all. That's all I'll say. And with that, into the topics of the week. Silly, silly people. I don't know what you mean, Jurassic Sky. Probably not still here. That's okay. We're going to review some stuff now. A lot of stuff. Well, two things. That's not a lot. Starting with Rise of the Tomb Raider on PC. Um, so I really enjoyed the first Tomb Raider reboot, which is a weird thing to say. So from now on, when I say Tomb Raider, I mean that one. Or the first one, I mean that one. I really enjoyed that. You know, I played Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2, and then played that, and was like, well, this is obviously a reaction, and Uncharted wasn't a reaction to that. But the but Tomb Raider was a clear improvement to me, and this is still a really good game. Pokemon Red for the 3DS, I'm not going to review that. Also, never played it. This was a really good game, but it, it something about it feels off, and it doesn't feel the same... It, or is like exciting and new and fresh and I think a lot of its flaws started to be uh, exposed when I played it um, so we got these combat it doesn't do and I applaud it for this it doesn't do the uncharted thing of like you're fighting 30 guys constantly and you're just you're a mass murderer by the end of the game it doesn't do that but in so doing it kind of tricked me into thinking the game was gonna get more difficult but it never did, so I probably should have upped the difficulty, which is my own fault, sure. But it doesn't... In making it easy, the combat... It never gets to where it should be. You can do all these things where you can craft, which is clearly inspired from The uh, Last of Us. You can grab bottles and craft a bomb and throw them. And that's really cool, and you can do that, but... You're so powerful, and you get so many weapons in this game, and your abilities... You can start shooting three people at once with arrows, and and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. That's part of, part of the reason why I didn't change the difficulty. It's a lot of fun to do, but when you break it down, the combat is kind of messy and sloppy. The way uh, Lara slips and slides around, and <laughs> I'm going to address that in a second. Uh, the way Lara slips and slides around, she's like one of those toys that you can, I don't know if they still have them, but you like it's like a little tube. It looks like a like like and you squeeze it and it like slips out of your hands. It's not a really exciting toy. But that's the way Laura Laura feels in the comment. Uh 
<laughs> comment's really funny. Um, <laughs> that's the way she feels in the combat, and it's and it's not good. It's this isn't Gears of War. This isn't The Last of Us or any other good third-person shooter. This is kind of you're flopping around, you're shooting arrows all over the place. Guys come and attack you, and you're hitting them with shit. And it's fun, and it's a lot of fun, but it really showed its flaws to me as like a kind of a mess. A fun mess. A good mess. But, you know. Oh, Jesus. This is very true. This is very true. I get Jesus not as often as you think. But I get weird out a lot. And the funny thing is strangers, and I don't mind you saying it, but like strangers in real life will say it. You know you look like Weird Al? And I'm like, of course I fucking know that. You crazy? I don't... But back to Tomb Raider, the real issue at hand. So the, the, the combat's fun, the exploration's fun, but uh, they made the open world environments larger. And they filled them with kind of just menial tasks that aren't interesting. And that's part of the problem with it. Like Part of the joy of the first Tomb Raider reboot again is that you, you kind of knew where you were going, but it did have the Metroidvania moments. And this has those, but it fills them in these large areas that are big for no reason. There's no reason for all this space or for little stupid side quests that's like eight in the whole game anyway. Why? Why? Uh, there's more tombs. Sure, people are excited. Oh, there's more tombs now. There's nine. There's nine optional tombs. There's probably three or so you actually do in the main game, and those are great. And the optional tombs are fine. But that's it. They're fine. They are... They're fine. And that's that's not a good ringing endorsement. Uh, things like this, these audio logs, you can listen to, but they you can't play the game and listen to them, which is like Bioshock 1 in 2008 or something solved that problem. Like I don't understand how we're still dealing with weird issues like that uh but it's still a lot of fun and it's gorgeous it is a beautiful game especially on pc it looked good on xbox one but i don't know comparative wise obviously the pc one's gonna look better overall probably <sighs> what oh yeah and then it has these weird it has the same problem that uncharted has even though i so this one point in the game you killed about 30 people to get here to rescue someone then, in a, in a scene, that person has the chance to kill the main bad guy, but they don't. And they're like, I couldn't, it was, she was unarmed. And then Laura says, even though she just straight up murdered at least 30 people in the last 20 minutes, and hundreds of others, probably about 100 others in the whole game, she says, oh, you shouldn't have to do that, it's okay, I understand. No, you're a murderer. And then after that scene, she goes on to kill about 30 more people directly after. And it makes no sense. I don't understand. Like, they're trying to make Lara this nice person and, like, caring and, and stuff, which is great. But at the same time, she's murdering people. She is shooting them in the eye with arrows. So why are you trying to make her so nice? She should almost be apathetic and just like, yeah, you should have killed them, but I understand why you didn't. I know I'm a crazy murderer, and it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. I forget the word, but it, there's a disconnect there of what you're doing in the game and how the character actually acts. It's the same thing in a lot of games where they're like, no, don't shoot, don't kill this person, and then you've killed like 500 people to get here. So it's like, what's another person? It it kind of makes you play Laura like a Laura, like a sociopath, and then in the cutscenes she's a caring whatever. Which isn't really that, it's like a minor quibble, because the main problem with the story is that, who cares? It also has other inconsistencies that make no sense, like there's this, you're fighting against this organization, Trinity, which is uh, kind of like the Illuminati, let's just say. There's some secret shadow organization that somehow has a military. But everyone in this military, one, is male, except for one person, which makes no logical sense, the bad guy's uh, sister. But even beyond that, like, who cares? Maybe you just want to hire all men mercenaries. I don't really give a shit about your gender equality in your Illuminati organization military. I don't care about that. What I do care about is, if this is a world secret organization, why are they all from the same place? They all have, like, English accents or American accents. They all sound the same. And they all roughly look the same. Do they not, they don't hire any Russians in this organization? 
or like what it doesn't make any sense as to how this organization even exists if it's like a secret branch of some other military thing I'm splitting hairs here hairs but why it doesn't it's like the strangest army like you went to one you went to one place in the country and bought your guerrilla army and now they're just it, it's stupid it's really stupid that's the guy oh the main guy the bad guy's name is Constantine with like a K freaking Russian I think that's Russian so all the negatives out of the way it is a really good game it is fun to collect everything I did about 90 I think the save file is like 93 percent whatever that means collecting the vast majority of things did not do all the challenges there's a lot of things to do to do everything probably take about 30 25 to 30 hours I would say not too much crazy over there and it is a lot of fun and it is really good but I remember I remember leaving Tomb Raider 2013 I think and being a lot more impressed and being like holy shit Tomb Raider is back like that was crazy and this game feels kind of more or less just like a continuation it doesn't feel like a sequel it just feels like oh here's more Tomb Raider all right but I was looking for you know the Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 jump of like holy shit this is Uncharted you know that's what I want from I guess the third in this uh, new trilogy and I would like also to see her raid some fucking tombs like there there are a couple you do in the main story sure one at the beginning one like in the middle one towards the end and and those are great but they have these open areas right that are just in the wilderness random areas and it's cool to fight bears every so often but I want to be in a tomb I want it to feel like the Resident Evil mansion of a tomb where you're there for an hour and it's an open area in the tomb and you're exploring and like oh I found the key for this door and I can go and do this other thing that's what I want I want Lara to be a tomb raider and it's still somehow in two of these games it still doesn't feel like she is and I I don't understand it and even with the optional tombs they all have like one I don't know what this means they all have one kind of puzzle and they're basic puzzles and they're sometimes frustrating in how they're just not really conveyed very well especially since I was playing the witness right before I started playing this game <laughs> so I was like ooh, puzzles done really well and then puzzles that are just kind of oh I turn this knob and then I pull this thing and oh it's over like oh well I guess I solved the mystery but I, this sounds really negative for a game that is really good I did enjoy my time with it it is fun it's it's got a lot of good moments but it's not it's not the revolutionary thing I'm gonna repeat myself like seven times it's not the revolutionary thing that Tomb Raider was the, the reboot and after after playing this, I'm gonna I haven't played Uncharted 3. I'm gonna go and play Uncharted 3 and see. Do I like Uncharted more? I've never been a big Uncharted fan, but I now I'm wondering if Uncharted does this better, even if you're shooting a thousand guys and it drives me up a wall because you're killing far too many people. That's what this does does right. Um, it does have the cool action moments like like that, but it, towards the end, towards the last half of it, it definitely is more combat focused. And the combat's fine but the exploration is where it is and it doesn't it never sits long enough it never I don't know it just never sinks in it's kind of just here and gone this is going to be a game at the end of the year that I look back on and I'm like yeah that was really good but kind of like a shrug that's what this game is eh. I, don't know. I don't want to be Lego the point any more than that it's really good not perfect it's got some weird issues but if you just want to shoot some dude with arrows, like it's totally the game for that. It also, one final thing, has a better perk system than Fallout 4, which is ridiculous. Because the Fallout 4 is, perk system is terrible. And this one's really good. It offers you skills that are actually meaningful and ones you have to look at and go like, do I want this or do I actually want this? I don't know. Is this more beneficial? That's what a perk system should be, Bethesda. Drive me crazy. Yay.
Watch out. It's another review, and now something completely different. And yes, I'm going to leave the Jesus comment up there because I think it's fun. Uh, Gamer Jesus, is that a thing? Is that a thing? Should I take that? Maybe I can. Maybe I can take that name. Anyway, let's talk about Firewatch. This is a game. Oh man, where do I begin with Firewatch? Um, I'm gonna begin no spoilers, and then I have a spoiler sign I made. See, I'm gonna put that up once there's spoilers. So. For Firewatch, this is a game I wasn't super anticipating, but this is something that I knew about and knew was coming and did want to play, obviously, since I fucking played it. Um, ah, man. Okay, so the game looks gorgeous. It runs pretty well. I play it on PC. Uh, apparently on um, PS4 it doesn't run super great, but whatever. There, uh, I mean, that's that sucks, but what can you do? It doesn't run super great on super great. It doesn't run that well on PC. There's some little hitches, but it overall runs fine. That's good. Looks great. Phenomenal. Uh, other things that are non-spoilery. Uh, I think the controls are really awkward. You have to hold down the left trigger to raise up the walkie-talkie, and then pre you can cycle through responses with LB and R. Uh, or the D-pad, if you're so inclined. Um, and the game doesn't tell you you can also use the D-pad. And it's kind of confusing how it works, but you understand it. And I understand it's trying to make you feel like you're using a walkie-talkie, but it it kind of just felt weird. But that I can get over that. That's fine. Uh, oh, I never even explained the game. You're you're in a forest, whatever, and you're talking to someone. There, that's my explanation of the game, but without spoilers. Uh, the other thing with the, with the controls, the map, if you bring up the map, with the D-pad, and then the map covers the screen, you have to look on the map. Uh, that's how maps work. But the controls kind of suck, you have to hold LB to zoom in, and then to close out of the map, you have to press up on the D-pad, you can't press, you can't press D, or D, not a D button, B, you can't press B. And it's just awkward and weird, but I mean, you get used to it and it's fine, it's just, when the only gameplay, in air quotes, is walking around and looking at stuff, and looking at your map, it becomes annoying when you're constantly throwing this map up and it's flipping around and and uh, you can't run while you're looking at the map, you can't see the uh, the compass while you're looking at the map. So, well, okay, so the story, without saying, without spoilers, the story starts off really well and then it goes on for the first couple of days where you're in this forest looking around and watching for fires and oh some teens are up to no good and you have to go deal with them and I start picking up shit in the world because I that's fun me I pick up a pine cone and I carry it with me throughout like this entire video just for fun because I'm weird um, I'm a pine cone friend man you gotta have a pine cone friend you even lived until you had a pine cone friend so whatever and then the story about a little under halfway, maybe about halfway, uh, becomes something different. And, it, and the pacing rapidly changes, it becomes a mystery, and the end of that mystery, I feel, is very underwhelming and stupid. Um, and I'll get into why uh, once spoilers start. Is that all? I might just start spoilers because, god, this game is frustrating. Um, yeah, spoilers now. Spoilers. Okay, the first ten minutes start off with this emotional, crazy thing I did not expect of your wife having early onset, I guess, dementia. And, and, it, and it really hit me, and I really enjoyed it. I thought this game was about divorce or, uh, or like your wife died or something. I knew there was something with a wife. Um, but didn't quite understand why. I don't think they ever said, and good on them. Because I would have been expecting something more from the story, and I did not get that. So the first ten minutes starts us off, it's sad, I was crying, whatever. Not, not like sobbing, but you know. Uh, it was sad. And then, the first day is slow, and you're, and you're, it's plodding this pace of like, well, I don't know what's going on, I'm holding a pine cone. I'm, I'm looking around in the forest, I don't really know what to expect. Oh, shit, these stupid teens are up to no good. Man, someone broke into my uh, tower. That's the that's the word I forgot. Someone broke into my tower. What's going on? 
that's weird. Oh, there's a, someone cut out the lines. Oh, this is super strange. I don't know what's happening. And that's all great. And then after that, it, it starts going, oh shit, what's this fenced off area? Are, am I being watched? Are we being watched? And then your character's knocked out and it doesn't make any sense as to why that other character does anything. Okay, so we'll get to that. And you're like, is this some big conspiracy? You find a lab and you find all this equipment. What's going on? I thought this was, are we being studied? It looks like we're being studied. This is crazy. And, and the voice acting and everything is great and it's, and it's, it's, it's pretty good. And the writing's good too. And it, and that's the problem with it is that it tells this mystery story. And the mystery while you're doing the mystery is really interesting. And then the, the resolution of the mystery all of a sudden happens and it's the, the biggest thud of the game just falling flat on his face I've ever experienced. It's just like, that's what it was. Is this crazy guy? So disappointing. And I don't mind that it wasn't a government conspiracy. I mind that this person's rationale for doing all these shit to you makes no goddamn sense. This is a guy whose son he may or may not have killed, uh, but I think it was an accident. This guy, instead of doing anything normal or logical, decides to live in the forest where his kid was killed and keep that area locked off or kid died and to prevent other people from finding the body. For some inexplicable reason, that's what he thinks is the logical path. And then he starts doing all this crazy shit to them for some reason like burning the forest down also for some reason he stayed here for years for years not once did he think oh well maybe the body will just be found and i'm gone missing and i'll just think i'm dead too no it makes no sense at all why he's doing any of this stuff why he's there still why he didn't clean up half this shit why he didn't pick up his son's backpack which had all the rope and the camera in it why 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 do you leave all this stuff there it makes no sense it, and it and it's really frustrating because it does make no goddamn sense this is a minor character that had meant nothing and all of a sudden was the main crux and it was like i guess this is sad i don't know and even going back before that those girls that were um doing fireworks that was a much more interesting plot line when i thought they might have been mauled by a bear that was an interesting plot line where is this going to go what's going to happen Oh, how about nowhere? How about fucking nowhere? And it was all the crazy guy. Oh, that's what I wanted. Oh, how about the 10 minute intro that was super emotionally impactful that really had nothing to do with the rest of the game? How about that? How about we talk about that? Because that's extremely frustrating. That's what I wanted the game to be. I wanted the game to be that, plus you just looking out for forest fires for, for four hours. The pa again, the pacing of the first two days where you're not involved in this mystery, it's like minor mystery stuff, is so good and is so exactly what I expected. And, and the mystery was great while it was happening, but you can't leave a mystery on the vine and solve it like that. It is such garbage. And it makes no sense. Oh, so you get to see a glitch in the game right here. And coming up. And it, and it, so the, there's these kids. Oh god, it's so frustrating <laughs> because these kids and and your wife with dementia, so much more interesting. And every once in a while, the game kind of has a uh, the other girl, the the girl in the wa other watchtower, talking to you about it. And it's like, well, if you don't want to talk about it, okay. And you can kind of tell her what you want. And, but I thought the game was about you spending time in the forest alone because you're trying to understand what to do with your life and it isn't about that at all and they make this stupid claim of like we're telling real adult stories and i'm like yeah you were for half the game and then you told some weird bullshit mystery that had no emotional impact oh that guy you you kind of know may or may not have killed someone and punched you in the face once okay i guess he and he, and he burnt the forest down all right I, what what it's crazy and, I, and it's and it's just disappointing because everything else is done so well. The story is told really well. The 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 framework of having this walkie-talkie 
is interesting and works very well, but it doesn't make any goddamn sense. The, the last the half of the game doesn't make any sense. And it, it, it really doesn't. Why would this person stay in the forest for years just to prevent you? And then this person's so smart, but they don't understand not to leave their backpack out with the keys that you're going to find. And then they talk to you within and it's like, I guess I couldn't solve everything. Oh, well, I'm leaving to, Me uh, to Mexico or to Canada or somewhere now. I'm like, what? Why? You, if your kid, it looks like an accident. If your kid died in an accident, just get the police involved or just fucking leave if you if you can't deal with it. Just leave and now your kid's missing forever. No, instead you have to go missing and live in a forest for years. It makes no goddamn sense. What was he doing this entire time? Just waiting? Just waiting for someone to show up so he can prevent them from finding his dead kid who's been dead for years? What? It, it's like, I, I, I have no problem with the, 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 the solution to the mystery being just one guy. You know, it, it could have been this grand scheme, but no, it's just you're being tricked by this one person. Sure, that's fine. But make them have a logical reason to be doing these things because they don't. They don't. How did no one find this person? Because in the five seconds I was there, the girls found me. And actually, come to think of it, it might not have been the girls that broke into your place or did any of this shit. They probably just left. But then you find the guy's radio. You find the girl's radio. And it's like, did he steal that from them? What's happening? Doesn't make any sense. It. And overall, because of that, the game's fine. The game's fine. It's interesting. It does. It tells the story really well. It's pretty. You use a map in it. <laughs> but it just comes off as such a bitter taste in my mouth of like. Yeah, I don't want this. This is not what I wanted. Like, go play Gone Home if you want a good story in a walking simulator game. Go play Gone Home. That's a much better story. Much better. Maybe it's not performed as well, but it's a better story. More interesting. It doesn't randomly have some guy who set the forest on fire and, and may not have killed his son for no reason doing shit for no fucking reason. Again, for no reason. Other thing. Pacing, because I played this game, it took about four hours, and I did explore a lot. It's not a lot to explore, not a lot to find. Um, see, four or five hours is probably what it's going to take you to play it, uh, which is fine. But I really felt like I should have stopped. I played it in two sittings. I should have stopped playing the game and played it again the next day. Like This, this is a game that would benefit from filler, actually, because of the, the mystery stuff is so quick and it happens so fast. And it doesn't make any sense. And, and, and you look at it, this was pointed out by, uh, Colin Moriarty on Kind of Funny Games. The game's like, okay, day one, day two. And then it's day seven, day 19, day 76. And it's like, what the fuck happened to all these other days? All these other days where I was supposed to be thinking about my wife who I've lost and getting over it. But instead, it's just, oh, I don't know what's happening. Oh my gosh, there's girls here. And then, oh, place is on fire. And, and going back to the pacing, if I had stopped to play the game over three days, I think I would have enjoyed it more. I think I, I think the pause and the, the anticipation and the moments where you're not playing, where you're thinking about what could be happening, would greatly benefit this game. Instead, it's a game. <laughs> you know, it's a thing. And it's fine. And I carried a pine cone around. Because honestly, that's what I'm going to remember about this game, is that I carried a goddamn pinecone around. Which, FYI, don't bother carrying shit like that around. It's just, oh my god. I don't, and I understand you could really like it, but it sets you, the first half, the final, final thought I guess, the first half sets you on such an interesting track, and then the last half completely ignores it. And that's the problem. It, it's two disjointed parts of a whole, and I don't buy really anything that happens in the last half of the game. It's not that compelling. It makes no sense. Uh, yeah, that's good storytelling, I guess. 
apparently. To some people, they liked it. And maybe you will. But I think it's kind of... It, no, it's not kind of contrived. It's very contrived, the ending with that. And the whole, you don't get to see... What's her name? Delilah. You don't get to see her at the end. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with their bittersweet goodbye. That's fine. That's good storytelling. That's fine. But everything involving this mystery and, like, the solution to this mystery... I'm using a lot of air quotes today. The solution to this mystery? Garbage. Just straight garbage. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. <laughs> this is the answer. I think I've been disappointed by every single game I played. New game I played this year. I was disappointed a little bit by Rise of the Tomb Raider. Disappointed, even though I really loved The Witness, disappointed by it in, in a lot of ways. Disappointed by this. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Don't know what's happening. Anyway, that's the show. Every Friday, live, 3 p.m. Pacific time, I'm here for the foreseeable future, doing whatever this is. Look like Weird Al, I look like Jesus, um, and a lot of 70s rock people, if you look them up. Just look up random ones. I look like some of them. But yes, I do the show. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. This is a short, short one. Short one. Almost short like Firewind. Beautiful game. Look at it. It's very pretty. Very pretty game. Does not save it for being obnoxious. <laughs>